So I'll let her do that while I start sharing my screen. All right, you guys. Oh, she said recording now. She got it for us. All right, perfect. Thank you, Betsy. Okay, perfect. All right, you guys, so welcome. So this is session three of our four-week series. And I had a few extra things I want to grab on my notes here to talk about when we're done. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and mute everybody. And if you want to unmute, you can go ahead and do that. Um, actually, I'm not the host, so I can't mute. Betsy, maybe you can mute everybody. And actually, you can mute yourself, too. So if you'll just do me a favor and mute yourself. We've got some background noise. There we go. Perfect. All right. So I'm excited about this, this one. I, this is one of my favorite things to train on because I wish that we could all get something at all our parties. Guys, right, so if you could just mute yourself, that would be great. That way there's not background noise. All right, perfect. Okay, so session two, last week, you guys talked about booking at parties. And so today we're talking about booking away from parties. So I wanna go through a little bit um, about the way to grow. So the way to grow is, is we talked about this, eight parties a month, so two bookings per party. We're gonna talk about the three sponsoring conversations and really making those five contacts per day. All right, so your strategic outreach and follow-up. We do know that everybody really is busy, but if you're reaching out and connecting with five people a day, this is where you're going to really be able to build and grow your business. And I know it sounds like a lot, five people a day. You guys are probably already doing that anyway. So you want to make sure, with who am I going to start with first? So if I'm doing my five contacts a day, who am I going to do first? This chart is going to help you identify where to start. So we're going to dig a little bit deeper into these groups, but what you're going to start with is your most recent customers and party guests, your warm call reports, referrals, and then your contact list. So let's talk a little bit about the customer follow-up. So you want to contact those who are interested in booking a party first. So if you're not muted, if you guys could just click mute on your screen. That would be great. I have someone who sounds like they're opening up candy wrappers and I might be hungry in a second. So, just, so if you could just mute, that would be good. All right, thank you. Okay, so building a relationship with your customers and your party guests, this is key. So you wanna make sure that this is at the top of your list. You're gonna start with any guests that expressed interest in booking a party. Hopefully you've either penciled in a party date or I don't know if you guys do this, but on my order form, I always write notes on the right hand side. I even might say she was wearing glasses and she had a hat on, or she was really tall, or she came with her daughter, or she, whatever you wanna put that will help you remember her. So that when you're reaching out to them, you're making it really personal. And I try to really get to know them. So we give you texts and we give you verbiage and samples, but this is a people business. So when you're reaching out to people, really make sure that you're making it personal. I know for me, sometimes if, I, if I'm not getting bookings at my parties, and I went through this, you guys, in the month of August, I had 13 parties up and seven of them had to postpone or cancel. I thought I was gonna lose my mind trying to get parties booked for September. I seriously thought I was gonna lose my mind. It was my worst month in direct sales ever. And so I have to sit for bookings. So I have to say, I feel very passionate about this training tonight because this is what I did at the end of August and I'm still doing now to rebuild my calendar back up, but I'm telling you it works. What I do sometimes is I get in such a mode of copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, send, 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 but not make it personal. And this is a people business. So slow down just a little bit. I had to tell myself, slow down. When I send out a message, make it a personal message to them something about them, something I remembered about them, asking how they are. This is definitely a relationship business. So all the other party guests that maybe didn't say that they were interested in just order jewelry from you, this is where you're gonna schedule time to follow up with them. So on Sundays, I always look at my calendar and I decide when do I have time to send out my follow-up messages? And I'm gonna repeat this a million times, you're gonna be like, please don't say this again, Terry. But if you plan on sending a message, and you don't plan on sending a second, a third, and even a fourth message, 
I would tell you, don't even spend the time sending the first. Don't bother. If you're not going to do a second, third, or fourth follow-up message, don't even bother doing one. Because no one, I shouldn't say no one, 99.5% of the time, people do not respond on that first message. It's not you. It's just the way it is. It's normal. So if I'm going to send follow-up messages, I schedule within 24 to 48 hours to send my second round of messages. I almost always hear back my second, third, or even fourth time. So making sure you schedule time on when you're going to reach out. The next time you're going to reach out to customers who place, so you did your, your hot leads, the people who ordered from you at your parties, the next are people who placed outside orders that you haven't gotten a chance to meet with, right? I want to use this example. Angie Colby on my team is a leader, and we were sending messages to people with the kit, kind of like what Betsy posted on her page. And um, she sent the message to an outside order, someone she'd never met. Not only did the gal book a party, but she's also signing up. So we never know. These outside orders, make sure that you're following up with them. The other thing I want to tell you about the outside orders is that they do not go on your contacts. So if someone places an order online, it does not go into your contacts. So make sure you manually put them into your contacts. All right. So we've included some sample verbiage on that worksheet number one that you saw. And then again, when you're at checkout, make sure you ask each guest how they prefer that you follow up with them. If they said text, you're going to text them, email, email, message, message, right? I will tell you as a side note, I rarely use email. I must always text your Facebook message and I get many, many more responses versus using email. So it's just an FYI. All right, warm call reports. These are the reports that you're getting from Touchstone to tell you who has looked at the emails that have gone out. This is so huge, you guys. This is where you are going to have an idea of what people are interested in. Now you know that these leads are interested in what you have to say because they opened the email. We want to make sure we're continuing the conversation with them, right? So these warm call reports can lead you to bookings. They can lead you to sponsor leads, but you don't know unless you're following up with them, right? So if you're following up with your warm call reports consistently, this is where you're going to start to see your bookings and your sponsors grow. You're going to notice on the warm call reports is that it looks different each time, right? So some people might view it one week. You have a different group of women that are viewing it the next week and so on. When I follow up with my warm call report, I have a, a message that I send and I can post this for you guys. I don't know if you, if um, Lindsay told you about this or not, or, or Betsy, but in your phone, if you have an iPhone, you can do a shortcut and just type in a, a keyword. So if I'm going to send Debbie a text and she opened my warm call report, mine is WRM. As soon as I type WRM, the text message that I want to send to her pops up immediately. What? So I'm not constantly having to send the same text message over and over. So I print out my warm call report and I will either call or text them. Most of the time I text them. And the reason I do this is because if I don't have Debbie's name in my phone and I just see her phone number and I texted her one week and she didn't respond and I go to text her again, I can see in the previous text that I've texted her and she didn't respond. So that's why I keep it in a text and I don't delete them so I can kind of see our past history with it. Normally with my warm call report, I just say, hey, I'm so excited. The company's sending out these emails. I want to make sure you're getting them and see what you think about the new line. What I'm offering for sip candle and sparkles in the month of, of September. What do you think about gathering your girlfriends for a fun night off? You get some free jewelry. They get time to catch up and shop the sparkle. I bring four bottles of wine. Everybody samples them. The winner gets a free piece of jewelry. So I'm finding that by offering the sip sample and sparkle theme, people are responding to that and they're booking. So make sure that you're using the warm call reports to see what people are looking at. You guys, you're paying for these. You pay $12 a month for your website feed. That includes these emails that are going out. And the emails are so beautiful. And they're so well done. And they look like they come just from you. So making sure that you're following up with this is so huge. New contacts and referrals. So we've talked about the two groups of, of prospects, right, based on the people that you've already met. The next ones are potential hosts and team members that you haven't met. In this business, it's so important that we're always meeting new people to keep our contact list going. Your contact list is going to constantly be changing, right? So we're going to talk about a few ways that you can actually meet new people to kind of build your business that way. And the first one is being prepared when you're out and about, wearing your jewelry. 
I don't know about you guys, but I started for the income, not the jewelry. So when I leave the house, I have to mentally tell myself to put on an ice bracelet, a stretch bracelet, and a wrap bracelet. Sometimes I only do the ice. Lindsay will naturally put on 2,000 bracelets on both arms, and she feels totally natural like that. <laughs> for me, I have to mentally prepare to put on jewelry. And I remember Laura Dorso from New York, Laura said, Terry, you in her accent, which I can't even do, you have to wear seven ice bracelets at all times. And I was like, Laura, I don't think I can. <laughs> Last year, it was two years ago, I was talking to Laura, and she'll share this story with you. She was struggling for booking so badly, and I remember talking to her, and she felt like, I just can't believe I can't get any bookings. So what she did, she had seven ice bracelets and went out to the mall. And that's how she started to meet new people. She started to meet people at the mall. She started to meet people out and about, and she started to rebuild her business. She actually posted on the Bahamara page, I don't know if you guys saw it, but she is down in Florida right now at a hotel, and she asked them, since I'm staying here, can I put the jewelry out in the lobby? And so she did, and a woman came by and bought $400 for the jewelry. You guys, if you're not muted, if you would just mute for me, I would really appreciate it. We have a little bit of background noise. So wearing your jewelry really starts conversations. This is huge. Practice your compliment response. The other day, this woman walked up to me at church. You guys who know me know I love the filigree necklace. And I, I was serving, so I had my serve shirt. I'm wearing this, this necklace. And I'm putting away the donuts. And she goes, oh, my gosh, I love that necklace. And do you want to know what my response was? Do you have your pen and paper ready? I said, thank you. And then I walked away. So don't do my response. I obviously need to work harder at practicing my compliment response. What I should have said was, oh my gosh, thank you so much. This is Rossi's new position to the crystal. I'd love to share it with you and see what you think. Do you want me to text you the link? That's all I would have to say. And I pull my phone out of my back pocket and text her the link. Now I have her information. So I know it sounds so silly, you guys, but I've been in touch with her for six years. And all I said was thank you. I was kicking myself. So make sure you practice your compliment response. And some of that is in worksheet one that you can look over. Get good at getting their information. I used to carry a pen and paper and pull it out, but now I just whip out my phone and now I'll get their information so I can text them the link to the catalog. That's all you have to do. But get comfortable at getting their information back. And make sure you have your lookbooks with you. I use those preview books instead of business cards, so I've never bought a business card. They're beautiful. People love to the story. They have a These are so powerful, you guys. Today I stopped by the pharmacy to pick up a prescription. I put them there. Stop by Panera. Check them up on the board. Someone asked me how much is free. I can tell you the lookbook. So these are really, really helpful. They're small enough that you can stick them in your purse. Let's talk about referrals. Asking your friends, family members, your acquaintances. Do they know anybody that might be interested in business? Terry, there's still a lot of noise and, and it's kind of breaking you up. Lisa Sunday, can you mute, please? I, is there somebody named Minnie on the line? Because I think it might be her. Minnie, sorry okay. to call you sorry to call you out, but you keep coming up and Lisa too. Lisa, if you'll mute, Lisa Sunday. Yep. You're the host. It's somebody named Minnie as well. Her and then Minnie, could you mute, mute your phone too? All right, perfect. There we go. Okay, thank you guys. Yes, that's so much better. Thank you, thank you. All right, here we go. So asking for referrals. Asking people who do they know that might be interested in the business? Who do they know that might be interested in hosting? Everybody knows somebody. And in general, people really do like helping others. So if they have a friend who loves jewelry or who might want to host, they're going to want to connect them with you, but we have to ask for it. You know, I was just telling them on the new consultant call just a minute ago, um, when we're reaching out to ask people if they're interested in hosting, there's a fine line before, but between asking for a favor and asking someone to host because they get something out of it. If we're reaching out out of desperation and we're like, would you please do me a favor? I'm getting started with this business or, a, or I'm trying to earn this or I'm really looking to build my business. Would you please just host a party for me? I would love it. If you get some free jewelry, it's totally different than saying, I'm so excited about this business. What do you think about giving your girlfriends a really fun night off? 
you're going to get jewelry. They're going to get time together where they get to shop this, this affordable line by Swarovski. Everybody is so busy. You're going to get some free jewelry. It's going to be a really fun night. I'm telling you, if you present it that way, you're going to get bookings, but not only are you going to get bookings, your bookings are going to continue. But if you're constantly asking for favors at some point, it's going to die off. So we have, you guys, we have an amazing hostess program, but we have an amazing opportunity for women and you have to believe in it and feel confident that that's what you're offering and your confidence comes across. So again, asking people, who do you know that could benefit from this? I'm excited about this. I have something to offer. And women are going to start thinking and think, oh gosh, I know she's, she could use the business. She's saving for college or, you know, she just bought a car or bought a house or, or she loves people. She wants to, she loves jewelry and they're going to think of you to refer. So this is huge. On our order forms, it actually says it. How many of us are actually using that question every time a customer comes up? and we do their order forms. Are you asking them all three questions? If you're not, something I've done in the past is I've said, all right, if I forget to ask you any of these three questions, I'll pay for your entire order. So far, I have yet to have to pay for anyone's order, but I guarantee you, I have not forgotten to ask anybody because I've said that, right? So if you just need something to help remind you, you can offer that as well. All right, so let's talk about networking and opportunities. This is this is important. I think we should talk about this. Liz Baer, who just promoted the senior executive director, moved to a new area. You guys have probably heard her story. Um, she lost her job. She's the breadwinner for her family. And um, it, it was so sad how she lost it. And they really needed the money. And she was in a new area. And she built her entire region by starting with networking opportunities and events. That's how she did it. She's so inspirational. Here are some things you want to think about. You want to expand your network and meet new people in your community. You can search online for these local groups, share ideas and services. Anywhere where women get together is really a great place to go. You can join a BNI, you can join a Chamber of Commerce, um, but I want you to think about the events before you do them and be selective. Uh, sometimes they're successful, sometimes they're not. Ask your upline leader first. Before you sign up for an event, go ask her because she has questions that she can say, ask them these questions. How long has the event been, been going for? How many people have attended in the past? How many vendors are going to be there? How is it advertised? How much am I going to have to pay? Where am I going to be set up? These are really important questions because I've done a lot of events that are not good at all. And your leader is a wealth of information that she can share with you. Yes, this would be a good event or no, it would not be a good event, right? So events are so, so huge, but definitely talk to your upline leader before you sign up for these. Um, okay, let's talk about social media practices. 80-20 rule. So 80-20 rule, this is important. You want 80% to be about you and your personal life, your journey, and 20% to be about the business, right? So 80-20. This is really important. When you're on Facebook, you're on Instagram, you know, whatever you're doing, Pinterest, you want people to follow you because they like you and they want to know about your journey. You're not there to sell them things. How many of you are unfriending people or unfollowing people because it's constantly, buy this, here's my website, buy this, here's my website. I will just give you my thoughts and feelings on this, and I know not everybody agrees with me, and that's fine. But I don't post my website up on Facebook. I want them to know about me. I want them to reach out. To me. I'm not asking them to buy on my on my personal news feed, right? I want them to feel like they know who I am. Rena, R E I N A, can you mute for me? So Rena, can you hit mute for me? R E I, thank you. Perfect. Okay. So it, this is so huge because people will follow, you know, I watched Andy Michael is my, was my sponsor and we both were at Party Light together and she came here. I watched her for two full years. I didn't like or comment on anything. She posted on Facebook about her journey and I saw her journey and that's why I joined. Lindsay watched Shauna post her journey on Facebook for I think six months before she joined. Women are watching you, but they don't want to be sold on something. They want to see your journey and they want to think, gosh, she's loving this. She's finding her more. Could I find my more? 
by joining in this. So I want you to really think about this. Um, post things that make you smile, make you feel good, make you laugh, make people think. Comment on other people's posts. Share positive things on their walls. Be friendly, be present, be thankful. This makes a huge difference. Sometimes I have to set aside time. I'll be like, I have 20 minutes. I'm going to scroll through and I'm going to comment on the people's posts that I want them to see my posts. So I will scroll through and say, oh my gosh, um, Susie Q, I really want her to book a party. You know, her and I have kind of become friends through this or acquaintances anyway. I want her to see my journey. I'm going to make sure I comment on her posts. It's all about the algorithm. If you are commenting on people's posts, they will see your posts. If someone's birthday comes up, making sure you're posting on their wall, they're gonna see your posts. Start engaging in a private message, they're gonna see your posts. So making sure that when you're on Facebook, you are using it to work your business too by creating relationships. That's what it's about. Um, you don't wanna post, oh my gosh, I'm looking for four more parties in the month of September, here are my dates, who wants to book a party? Has anyone ever booked a party that way? If you have, you're like in the 1%. Right? So you want to share, I am so excited. Look at all the jewelry I, my hostess got for free or have your hostess post a picture of it. I've given away such and such amount of free sparkle this month. My hostesses are loving it. Look at this bracelet. Um, somebody posted the, the bracelet, the wrap bracelet on the Emmys. I posted that. I do have a group. So the next slide or the next thing talks about a group and a business page. And there, there are different points of view on this, whatever yours is, whatever. Um, I have a group. I do use it sometimes. I don't always use it. I don't get a ton of business from it. If you're a new consultant, I would say focus on booking parties first and then work on that. Um, okay. So your contact list is going to be constantly changing. This is the next group of people that you want to reach out to. By adding new people to your contact list, you're gonna have it constantly changing and be new, but don't forget about your existing contacts too. So we've got the emails, the keep in touch emails where you're getting the warm call reports. We talked about your, your orders, your online orders, your referrals. What about your order history to identify customers based on a piece of jewelry they ordered? Have you gone through to see who ordered a small ice bracelet? Can you reach out to them? Have you gone through to see who ordered a wrap bracelet? Can you reach out to them? Because we have a lot of new ones. So using Glam Central on that search button, you could pull up tons of people to reach out to. Your past hostesses, those are great people to reach out to as well. Who has a birthday coming up? Can you offer them a birthday bling bash? Um, I've gotten several bookings from doing that as well. The nice thing about that is every single month, your contact list updates, right? Because everybody has new birthdays every month. So you constantly have new people to reach out to. Um, okay. And then holding a party of your own. This is huge. If I cannot get parties booked on my own, I will do, or throughout my, my contacts, I'll do a party of my own. I'll do a party of my own until I have to. I'll do it every week if I have to, until I can get parties booked. You could do so many parties of your own. You could do a mystery hostess. You could do a fundraiser. You could do a hostess appreciation. Um, we're doing another Diva Dice tomorrow. You could do that by yourself. You could do it with a group of people. So um, that's another really great way to kind of build your party calendar. All right, let's talk about party themes. I think party themes are great to offer. I wouldn't offer a ton of them. When you go and you've printed out 2,000 party themes, we always say the confused mind says no, right? I love Sip and Serve and Sparkle. I love the Wine Down Wednesday, Crystals for a Cause, Sip, Sample, and Sparkle. Um, those are all great themes. Mystery hostess, we talked about that. Okay, if you're feeling a little bit of resistance, offer a mini party. This is just a friend, this is just a party with a few friends. You wanna keep it simple and low key. A mini party definitely is better than no party, right? Plus with a mini party, outside orders make a huge difference. There are always those people that are like, I don't know enough people. This, that's a great person to offer a mini party to. And you could say, I'm offering four mini parties in the month of September, I've got four dates left, are you interested? We talked about fundraisers a lot on the new consultant call. Um, fundraising party, this is a really good way to get in front of a new group of people and to break that booking wall because a fundraiser party can get you in front of so many different groups that you start all new booking chains. Women that wouldn't necessarily book before might be interested in hosting for a fundraiser. Um, 
I'm doing one for a friend of mine's baseball team. Her son's in baseball. Last month, I did the Ronald McDonald House. I've done leukemia and lymphoma, Girl Scout troop, um, breast cancer. I've done several times. I've done Alzheimer's, so many different ways. And when you're looking on Facebook, you're going to see people raising money for different, different causes. That's a great time for you to reach out and offer a fundraiser. And your upline leader can talk with you more about that. Um, cheerleading, dance, soccer, local organizations, charities. These are all really great ways to think about doing fundraisers. All right, handling objections. Expect the objections, right? They are going to come. You know, Jack Canfield says, some will, some won't, so what? It's so true. The more no's you get, the closer you're going to be to a yes. So over time, you're going to get very skilled at responding to the objections and being supportive in it versus shutting down and feeling, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Feeling like it was against you. When someone says no, nothing changes, right? Nothing changes. So don't take it personally. Like you said, it just brings you closer to a yes. Um, so you can actually fill in the worksheet on number three as we talk about offering solutions. When someone gets this objection, our normal instinct is to go right into solution mode, right? My house is too small. And you might say, oh, that's all right. It's really fun when it's crowded. I've done parties in really small houses. I've done them in apartment buildings. It's no big deal. So while that really is a good answer, that hostess might kind of feel like you're arguing with her. And then she's definitely going to put up some resistance, right? But if you pause and you think about it first and you listen and you genuinely hear their concern, you're gonna to wanna to come back with something more, I know this sounds silly, but the feel, felt, found technique and everybody uses it, but how can we use it so we can personalize it? Like, you know what, I know how you feel. I, I've lived in an apartment before. I know it's kind of small. However, I do find that, and you can share you know, what you do find, making it genuine. So if someone says, you know what, I don't want to ask my friends. I hate asking them to spend money. Or I'm just too busy to have a party. My house is too small. My friends are all partied out. I don't know enough people. You know, so you might want to say something like, um, unfortunately, I've been hearing that a lot lately. And I don't know if this helps. When you say, I don't know if this helps, it's not saying, I have the solution. It's saying, what do you think about this? Like, let's get on the same page. Let's be a team, right? I don't know if this helps. But a lot of my customers have told me lately that they really find that they need to get out of the house, that summer has been so busy, you know, and that doing this get together is just what they needed. People aren't traveling or eating out as much. I would say, you know, summer's over. So people are, are now kind of getting back into the routine of things. You know, the fact that they can go to a get together and purchase something small or even not, and just enjoy an evening out with friends is just what we need. You know, there definitely won't be any pressure from me. What do you think about scheduling a fun girls' night out? So it's way more not, I'm going to solve your problem, but it, it's a little more like, you know, I found that, or, you know, I don't know if this helps. So it's a little bit more calm. It's a little bit more let's work together as a team, right? Um, okay. All right, so let's talk about the action steps. And then I wanted to share a couple more things. So we went through a lot of information. I talked fast, so I know I did it really fast. But there are lots of information for you on Glam Central too. Under words to say on the new consultant training, there's additional training on there. There's also training on Social Hub, and you guys, there's training on warm call reports. So if you're not sure how to use the warm call report, ask your upline leader or go to Glam Central as well and pull it up. Um, they have lots of information there as well. Okay, before we do the action steps, I just want to share a couple things with you guys that I wanted to add to this. And the first is, you guys have seen the guessing post online that people have posted up, like look at the, the jar, how many marbles are in it or whatever. I will say I've tried this multiple times. Sometimes it's successful, sometimes it's not. I have not ever done it where I haven't gotten anything out of it. So I will say post it. You know, I was disappointed. I didn't have as many comments as I thought I would this past time, but I was still able to book a party from that. And I have two other people looking at dates. It is well worth doing, but it goes back to what I said in the beginning. If you're going to post this and you're not willing to reach out to people one, two, three, and even four times, don't even post it. But it does work if you take the time to post it and follow up with everybody. 
So many people messaged me and asked me how many marbles are really in there. I have no idea. I have no idea. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'm type A too, but some of you guys who are like, I need to know, I'm telling you, it doesn't matter. It's okay. I just say, whoever I want to book a party, that's how many marbles there are in there, right? So Julie, this last time, whatever she guessed, that's how many marbles. And the rest of them, I reached out and I said, you were so close. I'm offering three more people because really it was only three other people that guessed that I really wanted to offer a party to. The rest were consultants, which the reason we comment on each other's is because when you comment it, it bumps it, right? So that's why you're seeing people comment. The guessing post works if you're willing to do the follow-up. Um, I'm just sharing some things that I've done after I told you about how horrible my August was, what I've done to rebuild my calendar. I did the guessing post and I didn't want to do it. You guys, I didn't. I was like, oh, do I have to do it? And I did it. I didn't want to, but I did it. The second thing is fundraisers really do work. I know we talked about them here on the training. I have a, a gal that I used to sell party light with and her son's really big into hockey and we became pretty good friends. And I reached out to her, I'm not kidding you, four times and she never responded to me, ever. And I was like, what the heck, at least respond. Finally, Sunday, she said, oh my gosh, I thought I responded to you in my head and I didn't. You know I really don't want to host, but tell me about the fundraiser. So once I explained to her how the fundraiser worked, she's going to book. So fundraisers really do put you in a whole different circle. The key to this is if you could get someone to host a fundraiser in their home like a regular get-together, right? That's what I would encourage you to do because you're going to get more bookings that way. Using the warm call report, we talked about that. The keyboard for placement, I am using it so much now. It makes it so darn easy to send text messages, but make sure that you um, personalize it. I'm hoping you're not hearing the yelling in the background. The Nationals game is on. I don't know if anybody else has baseball fans. <laughs> the Nats game is on and my husband and son are yelling, so something may have happened, so I apologize. Um, and making sure you have a system to track how you're going to do your follow-ups. So I just have mine in a little binder. I use it so much the front cover actually fell off. And I just have it paper clipped by month. So this is how I track who I reached out to and what they said. So making sure that you have some system to track it. And again, I know this is like the fourth time I've said this, but don't send a message if you don't plan to follow up in 24 to 48 hours. It's just not even worth your time to send one message. Women are gonna to respond to you in the second, third, or fourth message. It really does take that many times. There's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't take a lot of time to send these messages. It takes even less time to do a follow-up. Some of the things I've said that have gotten responses are, hey, or, hey, I'm just checking back, is everything okay? People respond to that, they're responding to that. Hey, it's your Sparkle Stalker here, this is Lindsay's. Feel, you know, I promise I won't keep Sparkle Stalking you. If you're not interested, feel free to tell me no. They respond to that. Hey, if you're not interested, I can totally take you off my list. They respond to that. Those are the three things that I'm hearing responses from, and I usually send it on my third message. I almost always get a response from one of those. Um, okay. Carrie, Carrie? Yes. Can I add something real quickly that um, might be helpful for people? Um, I don't know if people use this functionality. I just learned about it or just kind of started using it with my texting, but you can schedule text to go out later. So sometimes what I do is when I send a text to someone, I'll go ahead and schedule a follow-up text to go out like two days later. Really? And, How do you do that? And I don't know, maybe it's just, a, I have an Android Samsung phone, so maybe it's just that. But when you click on the send, and if you hold it down for a minute, it'll actually have a schedule function that comes up. And then I can pick like whatever day and then what time of day I want the message to send. So when sometimes when people tell me, can you follow up, you know, at a certain day, I'll go ahead and, and, and schedule the message to go that day. It's on an iPhone? On an iPhone, you can do that? No, my, I have a Samsung Galaxy. Um, okay. So I don't know if you can do it with iPhone. But it's just a helpful tool if you do have an Android phone that you can um, go ahead and send your text message and actually go ahead and schedule the follow up like 24 or 48 hours as well. And then it just goes automatically. That's a great idea. So I will be Googling that for all you iPhone users. I'm going to Google and find out if we can do that because how much more time would that save? Well, it frees up a lot of mental space, too, because yes. you're not having to remember to follow up with that person. Now, if they do respond back to you, you probably need to go through and, like, delete that message. But, you know, anyway, most of the time, as you said, they don't respond after the first time, so. 
That's a great idea. I'm totally going to use that. Thank you. Thank you for that, Lori. I'm going to look that up. Um, okay, so I'm going to give you your homework and your action steps, and then I will stay on for a few minutes and answer any questions. Um, if you are on my team and you're, you're doing Diva Dice tomorrow, if you will stay on with me for like 10 minutes. Um, all right, so your action steps is to follow up with customers from every party. I did this last week. I pulled out all my order forms from May, and I sat down and I followed up with every single one of them, sending them the kit offer this month. We have an amazing kit offer this month. I challenge you to send follow-up messages about the business first this week, the business first. People can tell you no to hosting and then you can't ask them about business. But if they tell you no about business, you can ask them about hosting. So refresh your contact list. This is the second one. And um, commit to making those five outreaches a day. Practice your response to compliments. Learn from my ridiculous mistake. Practice your response. Um, and then practice your response too to the three most common objections that you're hearing the most right now. And then if you need to, go to Social Hub and One Call training to review that if you need more information on that as well. So you guys, I'm gonna stick around for a few minutes if you have questions. And if you don't, then we will see you guys on here next Monday night, same time, 8.30. Lindsay is going to be on here. She's going to be talking about sponsoring. She's the queen of sponsoring, so you definitely do not want to miss it. It'll be our last series for the, the four weeks, um, so we're kind of excited about next week. So you guys have a great night. If you have questions, feel free to stick around and, and unmute yourself. Otherwise, you're welcome to hang up. If you're doing Diva Dice with me tomorrow, you'll stay on. Thanks, Hi, Terry. Thank, Thank you, guys. Hi, Terry. I have a question for you, Terry. Yeah. Um, you were talking about how you do the, like the marble game or how many, whatever. I've done that. It didn't necessarily work. I had two people, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I could never get them to book or respond back. But I have also seen, um, and I want to say it was, um, her name just, I just went blank. Where, and I've seen a couple people do it where they go, okay, who likes, what color, you know, like I'm gonna $20 for an ice bracelet and I have 15 slots and you have to send me $20. And have you ever done that? And does that work to bring people's awareness or is that just a, a, a thing to get like a couple hundred extra dollars into your order? That's really just a thing to get some extra orders. Okay. Not really to book parties. I have not done it, but I know other people have. Um, so that would be if you needed just to get extra orders. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank yeah, you. Good question. Sure. Terry, this is Annette. Hi, Annette. Hey. Um, I, I need some help with fundraisers. I have three potential ones. One wants a proposal, and I've written something up, and I just don't know Am I on the right track? Am I doing this right? What else do I need to know? So can we, at, at some point in the very near future, either do a call together so we can go over it, I can email you what I have? I mean, can we, can we figure out something? Sure, yeah. Just send me an email with what you have, and I can look at it, and we can go over it. I will okay. say, for all of you on here, I've never had anyone ask me for a proposal for a fundraiser. Normally, It's when a I big organization. Okay, it's and then with, a, yeah. I've done really big organizations too, Leukemia Lymphoma for Men, Women of the Year, I've done those. Um, I've never had anyone ask for a proposal, so send it over to me and let me know, you know, what they're looking for so we can look at the verbiage in that. Right, the right, fundraiser okay. Is entirely up to you guys as a consultant what you want to offer. So you do have leeway, but like I'm Annette's upline, so if you guys go to your upline and ask her or ask any of us, then we can kind of help walk you through that, what the best way to do that is. Great question. Good. Any other questions? This is Annette with an offer. <laughs> I'm doing an event on um, Friday night with a women's social group. There's supposed to be about 125 to 150 women attending this networking group. I don't know how many vendors. That was a great question to know to ask. Um, but 
Leslie's going to do part of it with me, and I'm interested in finding somebody who wants to do the second half, like the 7 to 9 on Friday night. So if anybody's looking for more leads, um, I'd be happy to share in this and, you know, split the, we'd be splitting the leads up. Awesome. So, you might want to post that on the page. That'd be great. I've posted it, and, and that's how I got Leslie. Yeah. And I posted again, and nobody else has responded. So okay. I'm just putting it out there if anybody else. All right, you guys. Hi. Yeah. I have a question. Uh, this is for uh, Gina Jimenez. Yes. Or Gina Vasquez. I go, well, anyways, I have a question about Instagram. Is anybody out there using Instagram for their business? And so how are you going about um, sharing what you have without looking salesy? Is anyone using, I'm not using it for my business. Is anyone else using it for their business and they want to share? No. It just seems that there's a lot of people doing um, big business on Instagram. So I don't know. I was just wondering yeah. if that was. Um, that might be another good question for the team page. I know I'm not using it, so I don't. I don't have much good insight on that. And one more question now: the Facebook ads. Does anybody buy those Facebook ads? And if so, um, I guess the same question. Is it working? Um, are you guys able to get leads that way? And yeah. now I have posted I have something. In the past and, and I haven't had much success with it, so I don't do it anymore. Anybody else having success with that? I've gotten a couple page likes out of it, but because of the way Facebook is set up, you can send like an automated request for them to like your page if they like the post that you paid to boost. But then if they don't, there's no way to communicate with them. It's definitely, they have all the control. So we pay to boost the ad and then there's really nothing we can do to um, develop that lead. Right. So okay. Yeah. It seems like it's a face. It's the way for Facebook to make money, right? Not right, us. Right. Right. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. True. Good point. Terry, what I found with um, it's Wendy. What I found with Facebook that works, and I get people asking questions, and it gives me an opportunity to reach out to people for orders or for parties. Um, is doing the Facebook lives when you receive. Like when you do your party order, when you have your own party and you earn the free jewelry or you earn the incentives and you do a Facebook live event and you kind of show people and tell people what you're doing and how that works. I've had literally between three and 400 people viewing the live. So Wendy, are you setting it up as an event or are you just going live on your page? I'm just going live on my page and I don't even usually say, hey, I'm going live. Usually I just go on just and it. I'll say, hey, everybody, I'm going to, you know, just give it a couple minutes or give it a minute or so to see who hops on and I'll just start talking and it, you know, I might be on five minutes, I might be on 15, it just depends on how much I happen to earn that time like I have like, lots of stuff that I could open now I haven't done it um, that's a great I idea go on and I open it all up and I say okay this is literally I hosted my own party as a consultant I hosted this party this is what I earned this is what you could earn and then I kind of go through it and tell them how much it is and I show the jewelry I put it on um, kind of tell them about it and there's always somebody that's hitting me either about, oh, I love the colors or how, how much is that? Or so it gives me an opportunity to engage with those people. That's a great idea. That's so a that really good idea. Me. And then like with the Instagram, I know, um, is it Alicia Joy? She does a lot of promoting specifically on her, her page is specifically like Touchstone Crystal. My page is my page. So I do post with Touchstone, um, but I don't, I don't push it. I don't, I, don't, it's not, I don't push my page as jewelry, but people see it, comment on it, send me 
a message even from my stories. I get messages from my stories. Okay. That's a really good idea. Okay. I'm going to try that. I love because like Wendy said, that gets you connected with so many other people. And if they're commenting on those things, that's a great way for you to reach out to them. It gives me an opportunity to reach out to somebody. I mean, don't get me wrong. My September has been lousy. It's like horrible. Um, but I do still reach out to people and do the happy birthday. And, you know, it gives you a way to engage with people. Yeah, it's all about the relationships. That's really smart. I'm going to do that. Really Wendy, when, when you say that when you're, you know, doing your live and people say, oh, how much is that? Are you responding to them during the live session or after? Typically when I'm doing um, a live, as I'm opening each box, I'll tell them how much it is. If they happen to miss it and they ask me, I'll send them the price in a, in a message. But you do that after the video, after uh -huh. your live session. Uh, unless okay. I happen Thank to you. see it, because when you're doing it, you can see their questions roll through. So you can hmm. answer their question if you see it, because you can see people hop on. So for example, if somebody I know hops on, like if my friend Polly hops on or whatever, I'll say, hey, Polly, right in the middle, and just keep it very low key. It's just very easy. Um, it's not structured. I don't do it structured. It's not formal. It's not structured. Mm -hmm. It's me with a drink and my hair is scrunchy and whatever, <laughs> and I'm just opening the box. So okay. that's a great idea. Thank you for sharing that. So I have another question. I'm sorry, you guys. Um, somebody sent me a messenger, and she's a friend of mine, and she asked, um, why when do we have to order? And I said, well, you know, the, the sales end, you know, of course, September, the end of September. So she never, um, I thought she was going to place an order, and she never did. So do I, what do I do? Do I just? I'll just leave it and just wait to see if she orders or do I just. I would call I up with her and just say, hey, just checking in, see if you're still interested in ordering. I don't think there's any okay. more following up. Now, what, have you had people kind of like um, be deterred by a party link versus just the website link? No, mm -mm. I think it's a great idea to have the party link on there. Okay. Yeah, super helpful. All right. Your hostess credit too. All right. Okay. Well, I have enough question. up. Thank you. Right. Enough question. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Thank you guys all for getting on. Right. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Terry. Thank you. Thank hey, you. Terry, did you record this? I did. Yes. Right. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thanks for everything. Thank you guys. Thanks for getting on with me. You guys are going to tell me, but we have to go over to my link because it's being recorded and I don't know how to not record it. So if you could just pop over, Leslie, Robin, Angie, if you guys can pop over to my link, TC Sparkle. Pop over how? Yeah, just go, just log off here and put in my link, TC Sparkle. Okay. Okay. Yeah, all right. Thank you. Do you? Okay. Bye. Bye. Mm-hmm.